Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. Kelton Cutlery, you can find me on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Ashley's back in the shop today. Um, remember the last, at the end of the last video with Ashley, I said, hey, are you up to hone a straight razor? And she said, sure. So here she is. I was talking with her just a second ago. She's never held a straight razor, never shaved with one, never honed one, never stropped one, nothing. So her first time picking up a straight razor was right here uh, at the bench. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, she's going to hone this razor right here. It's uh, one that I made a while back. Uh, it doesn't close quite centered. You can see it's off to that side. And this was one of the first ones. And so and the pivot, as you break it open, it gets loose up here instead of, you know, staying a little bit tighter. So she's going to, this is a practice razor. It's um, you can call it a third hollow or you can call it a near wedge, you know, whichever way you want to see it. But it's, you know, nice and thick, which is going to help out with the uh, the amount of pressure that she's going to use. First of all, um, actually, no, we're going to go over that right quick first. Okay, so the different grinds on a straight razor. All right, so I said this one right here is a third hollow or a near wedge, right? Mm -hmm. So where that... I mean, honestly, I shave with all of them, you know, near wedges, regular wedge, pocket knife, you know, extreme hollow grinds, all of them. I really can't tell much of a difference. You know, I really can't. I mean, I do know that I like a heavier razor because it <coughs> settles down my shake a little bit. Um, and I like a wider razor. Um, you know, I don't really care for the, the dainty little, uh, and of course it's, ah, the dainty little fact, uh, vintage type razors because they, you know, I just can't get steady enough with them. But anyway, so the grind, the grind does matter when you're honing a razor. Okay, the thicker the grind, generally speaking, the easier the razor is going to be to hone. Mm -hmm. Now, you might have heard it be the other way around because a thinner razor, you have to remove less material to expose a new edge. But <clears throat> the reason that I say that a thicker razor is easier to hone is you take one of these little bitty thin razors right here. Now this is not too extreme. That's oh a half hollow or so, maybe a half, three quarters, something like that. Now that edge gets so thin that it will flex over your thumbnail. You see it flexing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you guys might not be able to see this at all, but um, that edge is flexing over my thumbnail, right? With not very much pressure, okay? The thinner the razor, the more critical your pressure on the stone becomes. Because with the really, really hollows, the amount of pressure that you have to put on that razor to be able to get the stone to cut is so close to the amount of pressure where that edge starts flexing and it'll flex away from the stone and you'll end up sharpening the side of your razor mm -hmm. instead of the very edge of your razor okay so um, you know when you're first starting out get a half hollow something like that um, or you know just just know that that can happen mm -hmm. okay so uh, she's going to start off with this half hollow slash near wedge. Um, here's, you guys have seen this one before, one of my favorite ones. It's kind of a full hollow, but not as thin as what uh, like a vintage full hollow will be. Um, this is another one of my favorite ones. This one was really one of the first ones I made. It's kind of like a third to a half, somewhere around there. And, of course, because everybody always wants to know if you can grind thin, here's a nice little Damascus one, and it has got a really nice full, full hollow. Mm -hmm. And I've ground thinner than that, but honestly, I don't really see the point. <coughs> so, there goes a razor selection. Uh, oh, um, stainless versus carbon, I really don't see any difference. I mean, you know, I mean, if it's uh, stainless, it's more rust resistant. But that's why they call it stainless, not stain proof. You can mm -hmm. still rust a stainless razor. Anyway, um, we're going to go over stones right quick. All right, we have got 
the two stones that we're going to be using today and we'll go over those in just a second we're going to come over here we've got this is a dmt 325 um, sharpening stone once these get worn out on knives they work great for dressing the fascier stone getting them flat um, we won't really have to bother with that today because I already dressed these and they're good to go. Um, stones can get really, really pricey. I mean, really pricey in a hurry. Here is a small set of Nanawa um, water stones. Boy, my hand, hand is shaking pretty good. Uh, 5K, 8K, and 12K. That 12K, I looked it up this morning, that's about 100 bucks just for that one white stone right there. Um, and they're good stones. Um, I like them all right. Yeah, I feel how... Now you're just used to the the Norton oil, oil mm -hmm. stones, right? So these are extremely smooth. Mm -hmm. And they get smoother and smoother the finer they get and more and more expensive the finer they get. Here's a set of Nortons. Um, these are kind of pricey stones too. Um, to get these, you kind of have to get the whole set which is the 220 and a thousand grit which that actually makes not a bad knife sharpening set also and then the 4000 and 8000 grit this 8000 grit they say it's an 8000 but i think that it feels an awful lot more like a 6000 um, grit stone so the higher the number the finer the stone is going to be and then over here you've got uh, Arkansas stones. This one right here is a uh, Dan's translucent and a naviculite. Yeah, these are really cool because uh, it looks like a eraser. Check that out. That's cool. That's why they call it translucent because you can see light through it. All right. So, but these right here, like I said, they're. These right here make pretty good finishing homes, but they're um, 80, 90 bucks, somewhere around there. You gotta see me fumble around. This one right here would not be a bad um, starter set also. This is a Dan's uh, Soft Arkansas and uh, Black. I've honed a couple of razors on this one. I like it quite a bit. It'd also be a pretty good one stone selection. I think I picked this one up off of Amazon for about 80 bucks. And then you get into some really nice, a uh, little bit more pricey ones. That is a uh, natural whetstone company. They're soft Arkansas, which one thing, well, it's just a solid chunk of rock. Um, and one thing that's really nice about the, the Arkansas stones is that they're natural stones. So you get, you know, that, while well, it looked kind of nice and pretty because it's all white, you know, you don't get the same effect as you get from a, you know, a natural stone and, you know, all the different colors. That's a soft arc. And then the last one here, I do have a hard arc also, but uh, I just went with straight with the... Um, this is Natural Whetstone Company's uh, Translucent Black. So it will pass light, but kind of just on the edges, not like that, that Dan's Translucent. And this is an extremely nice stone. Um, I burnished this side, so it's extremely smooth. And then this side I lapped to uh, 600 grit. Um, this will cut about the 600 grit side. Um, it says 600 grit, and I know that these right here are labeled, you know, in the thousands of grits, but it's two different grit rating systems. Um, Is that because of natural and synthetic? Kinda, yeah. Okay. So this stone right here on the, the side that's dressed with 600 grit is going to be very, very similar to, um, oh, a 6K or an 8K in Japanese water stones. Mm -hmm. The side that's burnished, it's going to be you know, the equivalent of this Nanawa 12K or higher. Okay. Just depends on how you dress the stone. Um, we've got some strops, we'll get into that in here in a second. So the star of this sh this uh, video, I mean besides Ashley, is we are doing two stones here. Um, Ashley's gonna be working with, let me get these razors out of the way. Ashley is gonna be working with uh, a king one six. Now I picked this up off of Amazon. It got here yesterday. 
it was 26 bucks shipped to my door with Amazon Prime, which I honed a razor on this yesterday, and boy, let me tell you, if that is any indication of the way this stone is going to end up acting, um, that is one heck of a bargain. Uh, so we got a one uh, one thousand grit on this side, and a six thousand grit on this side. They've been soaking in water here for a little bit. I've got my uh, beloved Suhero one six. Uh, it looks like they've discontinued this model, um, gone to a new Cerex, uh, I think. Which I don't have one of those, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. I know this old one is. And this king so far is pretty is impressing me quite a bit but I'm just gonna put this one over here on this side so that you know I can kind of show her uh, you know some of the strokes a little bit easier so I can work on that stone she can work on this stone okay so now I went over the grind types a little bit of the steel types um, the different stones um, next thing is pressure pressure is extremely important <laughs> in honing straight razors, okay? So mm -hmm. pretty much the amount of force that you use on the blade on a knife, you take that and it's probably about a sixth, okay? So if you use a pound, that's too much advanced math right now. <laughs> <coughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna do some quick exercises here to kind of teach her the right amount of pressure to use. Um, and then we'll get through that and then she will get to honing. I'm not gonna hone one today. Uh, just in the interest of trying to keep the, the video a little bit shorter than normal. Um, okay, so, so here's the razor you're going to hone with. Okay, so remember like I was telling you, how you can drag that knife or razor. Sharpening a razor is really close to sharpening a knife. Um, a lot of guys say it isn't, but it is. Okay, so sharpening that straight razor is a lot more similar to sharpening a pocket knife than it is to sharpening a chisel, all right? The biggest difference between sharpening a razor and sharpening a knife is that the razor you use way, way less pressure, and you also go to a much, much finer degree of finish, okay? If you were to try to shave your face right off a DMT-325, you would do it. You would get all the hair off your face, but your face might not really like you very much by the time you were done all right um, this one six edge it's going to be just fine you know for a good basic <coughs> edge and that's what we're after here is a good basic working edge this is going to be your base i don't know if you're going to keep uh, honing razors or not but anybody else if you want to pick up a razor learn how to hone it um, you will go farther than just this one simple one six edge Okay, you'll get a 1.6 edge, you'll get a Nanawa 12K, um, maybe get into the Arkansas, get into the Eschers, the, you know, the really high dollar stones. You know, you can play with all of that, but this is your base. So whenever you have a problem, you can come back to this and you know that you can get a good serviceable edge anytime you want. Then you can play around with, you know, as far as you want to take it. Anyway, so, so start off... So you guys at home, you're not going to have what we're about to do, which is uh, I'm going to hold this, or she's going to hold the stone while I uh, hone for a minute. Then we're going to reverse, and that way we can kind of get a baseline of about how much pressure you're going to have to put on the razor on the stone. Then we'll do it on the bathroom scale, or not a bathroom, <laughs> postal scale. Bathroom scales That's don't read fine enough. Kind of crush that if you stand on it. Yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and that way you'll get an actual number of pressure. And so if you guys at home, when you go to home, um, you know, grab a postal scale and you'll be able to kind of tell the amount of pressure you're after. All right. So you know how you can put a blade mm -hmm. on a stone and drag it across and act, not actually cut anything, right? Okay. So you're not providing enough pressure on that steel to get the stone to cut. But then you can put way too much on it. All right, so we want to be in between. So I want you to take this stone and just kind of hold it. Okay. One hand, two hands, something like that. There it's cutting. Now, you can go a little bit more than that if you're really trying to shape edges or something. 
but that's about the right amount. Does that feel good or do you want me to go? You got it set in your head? The amount of pressure? You do? Okay. All right. Can you feel it cutting? Don't lay the spine on also. So <laughs> that's alright. We'll get to that in a second. You feel the stone cutting it? Barely. Barely? Okay. Yeah, you're a little bit on the light side, but that's okay. Now that one was too much. Right about there. Okay. Okay. Yep. That'll be good. Alright, so now let's put a an actual number to that. For you folks at home that don't have somebody, um, you know, holding the stone to give you feedback. All right. Actually, I'm going to have you hold the camera. And then just get the, the ounces there. Okay, so I zeroed the scale with the stone on it. All mm -hmm. right, so this is going to be the weight of the razor. Right about there. Boy, my hands are really shaking this morning. You need so, more coffee? Probably so. So that's <laughs> that was about five ounces, six ounces, five ounces, six ounces, somewhere in there. But remember that the razor itself weighs almost three. Okay, so you're looking around the two to three, maybe four ounce pressure range. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very light. All right, so that's the biggest thing, is your pressure when you're honing razors. Let's get that wet, put it back there. And we can make sure we didn't get any nastiness on the camera. Okay, let's toss this off to the side. Okay, the other big difference between sharpening a knife and honing a razor is your angles. Okay, remember how when we were sharpening a knife, I told you to take your knife mm -hmm. and put the flat on the stone mm -hmm. and then raise the spine up a little bit until you could feel that secondary bevel mm -hmm. and then try to maintain that angle as you went across the stone? The razors, you don't have to do that. Razors have got a built-in angle guide. Yeah. So, now that we're about ready to actually start honing here, we are going to tape this razor up. Um, when you tape a razor, I use electrical tape. And, you know, there's, there's pluses or minuses uh, to honing with tape and honing without tape. But for beginners, I really like to suggest that you use tape because it prevents excess uh, spine wear. So you just put a little bit of tape on the, the spine, get it all nice and flat, okay. Okay, so now what you do is you lay it flat like that, right? That's your sharpening angle. Okay. So the spine and the edge need to both contact the stone all the time, okay? okay? So never lift the spine up and never lift the edge up. The idea behind the way that a straight razor is ground is that as you hone, the spine wears down at the same time, the spine will wear down at the same time that the edge gets worn back, maintaining the right angle, right? Mm -hmm. um, with the tape, you do alter that a little bit. You add about a degree worth of uh, Instead of sharpening at a 15 degree angle, with one layer of tape, you'll be at a 16 degree angle. Mm -hmm. um, don't get hung up over that, it's just, just the way it is. So the tape will stop spine wear, but when you're first starting out, uh, first starting out that tape gives you a little bit of cushion. Mm -hmm. So you wear the tape out before you wear your razor out, okay? So what you do is you just lay it flat. Mm -hmm. Now, you wanna torque the edge into the stone a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
the spine and the edge are both contacting at the same time, but you want to put a little bit more pressure on the edge side. Okay. okay. And just like that. Now the motions, actually we're going to go ahead and swap sides here. Okay. Now the motions, you guys can kind of see me up here. Uh, the motions, it really doesn't matter. Just like with knife sharpening, you know, you can go <coughs> forward and back, forward and back. You can kind of tilt it like this and go forward and back, forward and back like that. Vance does these kind of crazy ones where he comes all the way back, all the way forward. I typically go like about, oh, about like that when I'm uh, setting an edge, you mm -hmm. know, working to get the burr to start with. So you can go like this, you can go like that. You can do, a lot of guys do circles. You can use one hand, um, especially when I've had a day where my hands are shaking a little bit. I like to put the just one finger off the off hand, and it kind of smooths the travel of the blade on the stone. Mm -hmm. So you can go circles going that way, you can go circles going this way, forward and back. Um, the X stroke, or you know, just a normal like a knife sharpening stroke. Um, pretty much whatever movement is going to help you maintain even pressure with a little bit of torque and not have the blade skipping around on the stone mm -hmm. that's what you need to do so i would grab that razor and then do a couple of them so try the little half strokes should have tilted that way so it's even you can now the one thing about this king is that it's only a two and a half inch wide stone instead of a three inch wide stone mm -hmm. so you can tilt uh, you know Go this way if you want to, that's fine. Okay. Nope, the spine needs to stay in contact. Oh, you said Vance goes like all the way? Mm hmm. He does. Yeah, he is very. I don't know if you guys know this. Well, you probably don't because I haven't put Vance in a whole lot of videos, but he is a very, very reserved and very methodical yes boy. he is <laughs> he is so you know that's a good thing yeah i guess so and um you know i'm not you know i am much more of a hey get in there get her done and get out and get on to the next thing right he's like kieran yeah mm -hmm. they're a lot alike yeah so if i was to tell him to you know rub one side of the razor for um you know a minute and then you know flip and rub the other side for a minute he would sit there he would actually set a timer up to make sure that he went <laughs> 60 seconds on one side and 60 seconds on the other side you know yeah i don't have the attention span yeah me neither. to put that much focus in yeah okay so now try well first of all does that way feel good to you mm -hmm. it does okay try some circles Now do some X strokes. That's just like a knife. Okay. I don't like that. You don't like that? I want to rotate the spine up off of it. Oh, because it's so similar to knife sharpening. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Now that's something I never would have I never would have thought to say to a beginner about that. Okay. It so. just really feels like I should <coughs> pull the spine up. Okay. Doing that. All right. Well then. Now that you've practiced, I'll go the other way a little bit first, just to double. Yeah, so bring the edge this way. Yeah, yeah not, not with the X strokes, but with your either your half strokes or your circles, just to kind of get used to it a little bit first. And then we will dull the crap out of the edge, and then we'll get started making it sharp again. Are you using about that same amount of pressure? I'm attempting to. Okay. <laughs> You know, and that really doesn't matter either. I mean, as long as the stone cuts the steel, then you're doing it right. As long as it's sharper when you get done than what it was when you started, then you're a good sharpener. I don't care if that's a razor, a pocket knife, a kitchen knife, a drill bit, a handsaw, um, a chisel, anything. As long as it's sharper when you're done than what it was when you started, then you are a good sharpener. The rest of it's just practice. All right, you feel pretty confident? Sure. Okay, let's dull the razor up. And we're gonna go into 
the side here. Now we're not going to dull it up too much because we do want this to be a, a you know a reasonable length video. Okay, now it's still sharp. No, that part's too sharp. We just want to get it to the point where it won't take hair off. That's about there. Look at that, almost hit my shelf. Okay, so now just in, just as in a knife sharpening. Now with these water stones, you got to keep the stone wet. Okay. Okay, pick one side and abrade that side until you get a burr. And it's going to be a real nice light burr. So circles, half strokes, whatever you want to do. And then I'll grab my notes and maybe I'll just sit here and talk somewhere while you're doing it. Tell us stories. Tell a story? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. It could be a nice story. Okay. <laughs> well then, so probably the biggest reason I'm, uh, I'm making these videos, um, both sharpening and, you know, having Ashley over to show you guys is, okay, so, you know, I make knives. Make knives, razors, choppers, you know, you name it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I sharpen a lot. I mean, a real lot. Um, when I first decided to, to pick up a straight razor about a year and a half ago or so now and start really shaving with them and making, making them and, you know, just playing around, um, I had a heck of a time um, learning how to hone a straight razor. And I think my biggest problem was that I was listening to a whole bunch of guys that were trying to make it sound tough. When all it is is slap, rubbing a chunk of steel on a rock. I mean, this is not really much different than any other kind of sharpening. You know, you, you abrade one side of metal or one side of the blade until it meets the other side of the blade at a perfect edge at the desired finish. So like in a pocket knife, it's, you know, a, a Norton oil stone or a DMT 325, something like that. Well, with a straight razor, it's the same dang thing, only instead of stopping at, you know, a coarse grit, you're going, you know, as high a grit of stone as what you have. And the blades are so thin that sometimes the edge can flex away from the stone. And what it was was I was making it too dang complicated. And that's coming from a guy that sharpens an awful dang lot. I can't imagine what it would be like for somebody who didn't sharpen knives all the time, how it would be for them, Thank you. you know, not having that base of experience. Maybe it would be easier, maybe it wouldn't, I don't know. And so that's kind of the point of these whole videos is, um, you know, just breaking it down, making it easy. Because if I tell you it's easy, and if you believe me that it's easy, then it will be easy for you. Um, just the same as with anything else. If you believe you can do it, then it might take you a little bit of practice, but you can get it done. You got a bird yet? If I do, I can't feel it. Not quite yet. Okay. Okay, so make your circles a little bit bigger. There you go. And so yeah, that's that's why I'm doing these is is um, is just to prove that hey, you know what, honing a straight razor is not really that tough. Now, granted, this is, um, we've got a couple of things going for us here. One of them, this is a, a straight, straight razor, as in the blade is not twisted, it's not warped, um, you know, it's good and straight and clean. Um, so we don't have to do... Okay. Not yet? Okay, we'll swap to the other side and do it for a little bit, just to kind of keep things even. Okay. Um, we're not having to deal with a, a worked blade or one that's twisted or anything like that. So this is just straight up sharpening or honing. Um, the, the blade on this razor, it's out of my 1095. Um, I heat treat it. I don't have a Rockwell machine. Uh, the few that I've had tested came back around the 61, 62 Rockwell range, um, which means that it's 
you know, fairly hard. Um, it's fine grained. It responds very, very well to a burr based honing or sharpening technique. Um, softer steels, when you bring up a burr, sometimes that burr can like want to hang on to the, the body of the blade. This stuff right here, it comes up to a burr, and then you weaken the burr, and then that burr, when you can see it, when you can see it come off, it comes off as very, very small flakes um, on the stone. Um, like a really soft stainless steel uh, kitchen knife, I've seen burrs on those come off that were an inch long. I mean, um, yeah, not, not so good. Um, but this right here, this steel works great with a burr-based method. Um, we've got some known good stones here, you know. You got a burr yet? You feel. You feel. Okay, I feel a burr. I feel a burr right in here. Maybe very the beginnings of one up in here, and the beginning is the one back here. I can't see any re light reflecting off anymore. So now, now go back to your original side. Okay. And then this time you should be able to establish that burr along the whole the whole side. Swap sets. Yeah, you know. Try some half strokes. Half strokes kind of seem to me to. Now don't come off the stone, or yeah, just leave the blade on the stone the whole time. There you go. Now you're starting to see that water, how the blade's actually starting to Mm -hmm. to see right there that water is stopped it's not coming up onto the blade but it's not going under the blade either yeah see that yeah okay when that water starts climbing when it does this which let's see if you guys can see this. see how that water is just it's like the edge is making a dam okay and the water is not climbing up over the edge and it's not going up underneath the edge for the whole length of the edge. That's one of your indications that you're getting really close to a bevel set. Okay, now a bevel set and razor speak. That's another thing about razor. They got special names for all of it. Yeah, I've never heard any of it. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> all right, so your bevel set is when you actually get both sides to meet, right? Okay, then after you get that set, that's the most important part. Which th that's why I stress using a burr so much because the burr tells you when you are set. You mm -hmm. cannot fool a burr. The burr is honest. You know you can trust mm -hmm. it all the time. <clears throat> Once you get that bevel set, then you start refining it. Then you start bringing in uh, you know whatever scratch pattern or what grit you're going to finish off at, um, and truing everything up. But that right there, when that water stops, when the edge acts like a dam for the water, that's when you're getting really close. Um, a lot of times you'll see the water will slide up over the edge. They call that undercutting. When the, the edge will almost like cut the water off the stone, mm -hmm. then you know that you have to be meeting the other side because otherwise it won't lift that water up off the stone. Mm -hmm. yep. So keep going for a little bit. And we definitely want to go to a burr because like I said, um, the burr will not lie. Now this is also mostly for new razors or new to you razors or razors that have been damaged. Um, See how on the heel it's starting to climb up? Yep. Mm hmm. You don't have to sharpen a razor like this every single time. You know, um, this razor will get honed and then it'll shave perfectly fine with just stropping for, you know, the next month. If you're a beginner, beginners typically wreck edges a lot faster than they wear them out. 
um, maybe six months if you're an experienced user with uh, a light touch on the straw. Um, and then at that point, you really don't have to go through this whole sequence. You can just go to your finest stone and give it 10 laps on each side and then go back to stropping. So this is just kind of to set your initial edge up. So the guy that just bought, um, <coughs> you know, a new gold dollar, they actually sell straight razors for like 10 bucks a piece straight from China. They're actually really not bad razors at all. I mean, I've got one. Um, and I've shaved with it for a while. I mean, for the money, it's not a bad razor, especially if you want to try it. But you will definitely need to hone it yourself. It doesn't come uh, ready to go right out of the box. Okay, now check for your burr. Mm -hmm. You do feel it? Okay, now it's, now what does that burr feel like compared to a kitchen, the burr that you got on the kitchen knives? So much thinner. So much thinner. Yeah. So a sixth, an eighth, half? Sixth. A sixth? Okay. Yeah, they, this burr that I'm talking about isn't very much. Now, can you see it with your with your eyeball? I'm blind. Well, yeah, I just got glasses the other day. I am too, but, um, and I didn't even know it. What you'll end up doing is kind of taking it and then twisting it in the light, and you'll be able to see a glint along the the edge if it's there. I can see it. And it is very, very fine. Okay. Yeah, we're talking... This is something like I tried smaller on... smaller than a hair. Oh, way smaller than a hair. A hair is three to five thousandths thick. This, I'm talking, is... a half a thou to one thou. So it's going to be a fourth of the size of a human hair, something like that. Okay, so now, but even though you can't see it, you can still feel it. All right, now go the other way. Now this is something with, uh, uh, with these water stones. I typically, uh, I've got an old chunk of two by four, um, and it goes across my shop sink. And so with water stones, I usually hone over the sink so I can put nice warm water in the sink. And then, because a lot of times it's cold out in the shop like it is today. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's get you some heat there. Thank you. Um, you know, and that way it's a little bit cleaner. You don't get water all over the place. Um, the Arkansas stones uh, or your oil stones. They're actually pretty nice because I use just uh, mineral oil um, as a stone lubricant on those, just the same as you do with the knife sharpening. Um, and, you know, you don't use near this much. You know, I mean, you get a little bit of oil, but not very much at all. Um, and the oil that you do have that gets on your hands is, I mean, it's mineral oil. It's, you know, I mean, that's what baby oil is made out of. It's and it's also good for like wood scales. What's that? Feels like it's already on the other side now. Yeah, it will. It will it come quick. in pretty quick. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so you were coming back that way, so it'll be. You need a little bit more up here at the point. Okay. Or they also call that the toe in razor speak. So, in a straight razor, you know, on a knife, this would be the point. This would be uh, your ricasso. On a straight razor, this is the toe, and this is the heel. Yeah, so you have a good burr the rest of it. You just don't have it up there at the point. So, yeah, you can you can raise the back end of the razor up a little bit to touch that. As long as the spine and the edge are both contacting at the same time, it'll be okay. And it won't take much. You're feeling it on the back of your hand? Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen somebody do that. I climb too much for my fingers to work. You can yeah. feel it there really well though, I right? I can. <laughs> right, so, hey, look at there. <laughs> Ashley just showed us a new one. Okay, so uh, it's a different feeling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I can definitely tell that little bit of scratchiness right on the edge. That I don't feel that way, but I do feel it this way. 
But if you're stropping on the back of your hand, that means you're going to do great at palm stropping. Because that's actually the thing really? that we're going to do here in a second. So actually, first, before we swap to the 6,000 side, mm -hmm. okay, so now um, we're going to kind of max this stone out. Okay? okay, so since we're just working with a 1 and a 6,000 grit stone, we need to get the most usage out of each side as we can. Okay. okay? So um, you're going to want to turn your stone a little bit sideways. Okay. Okay, now this is going to be a... Uh, actually, maybe we'll have you try it with this one first. Uh, actually, I'll just use this one. Okay. So what she has been doing is half strokes and some circles, you know, whichever one she wants. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to lighten up the pressure a lot. Like half the amount of pressure you have been using. Okay. I know. You're, pretty soon you're going to be like, well, what's going to hold the razor to the stone, right? Right. It'll hold it there, believe okay. me. But you just use less. Now, we're going to strop, where you very lightly, spine and edge still contact the stone at the same time, but now instead of cutting into the stone, you are stropping. Okay. You're sliding over the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to refine your scratch pattern, and it's going to get the most that we can get out of that 1,000th grit side. Okay. Well, here, try it on this one first, since you get a nice... Because these are all new movements. Remember, spine and edge. Now, way less pressure. Ah, ah so you didn't have the spine to mm -hmm. touch him. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this time what I want you to do is roll on the spine. Okay, so instead of bringing it forward like this, mm -hmm. and then lifting it, and then turning the edge into the stone, First, we got a little bit of a grittiness on there. That might have been on the razor. Okay. So, strop. When you get to the end, turn it on the spine. That way, your your uh, edge can't contact the stone. And that's also the same movement that we're going to do on the leather strop here in a little bit. Okay. Now, see how I'm starting here at the heel? Mm-hmm. And then as I bring it back, I come to the point. Start on the heel, come to the point. That way you're getting the whole edge on both sides. They call that the trailing X stroke. It's pretty complicated, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you have to do the trailing edge stroke, uh, I'd say probably 10 times on each side. Where's Vance to count me? Yeah, he's as cool today. Oh, we need more water. Yeah. Ah, splash it all over you. It's all good. There you go. It's backwards from what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that time you didn't contact the heel to start with. There you go. This is a lot of stuff that, you know, I can't show you guys because uh, a lot of times I don't even know. I mean, my hands, you know, once you know how to do something, you can't really fake it. I mean, you can try, but you ever been to a bar? I hate to bring bars into this. But you go to a bar and the bar's got a pool table and you see some some person over there shooting pool and that you know they look like they're shooting pretty good pool right I mean they're making the majority of their shots and everything and then you know the next time you're there you see somebody there that's just missing a whole bunch of shots that's me but then they start betting on the next pool game and I'm then all not of a sudden person. they start winning <laughs> Well, if you really pay attention to the way that person was when they were missing, if you pay attention to their body language, their hands, their stance, the stroke with the, the pool cue, um, all that kind of stuff, you can spot somebody who's a pool shark, I mean, a mile away. 
even if that person is switching hands. I mean, I know I used to play an awful lot of pool. I never did like playing for money, but um, uh, but I used to really enjoy the game of pool. I mean, it's a fun game. You get angles, you know, it's, it's a good time. Okay, so let's swap to the 6,000 grit. So now we're going to swap to the 6,000 grit. I'm glad you were counting because I was just going. Oh, I forgot it, I was counting. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we're not getting hung up on the numbers, remember? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it's the same way with honing or sharpening. You know, I mean, I suppose if I really concentrated, I could make my hands do stuff that they're not supposed to when I'm, when I'm sharpening. Mm -hmm. But that's not the same as getting somebody who's never honed Right. In front of the camera on a, uh, you know. Okay. So now go back to your, your half strokes and bring up, you know, on one side, bring up your burr on the other side, swap sides, move the burr to the other side, and then we do that same thing all over again. Okay. Circles again? Uh, I like half strokes a little bit better. I think they get... Like that? Yeah, I think they remove steel a little bit faster than the circles and at the same time are a little bit more controlled. But that's just me. I mean, you do what, do what you want. Yeah, I never even thought to feel for a burr on the back of my hand like that. Never. My hands are all callous and... Well, from rock climbing, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, mine are beat up too from... You know, I forged two razors to warm the shop up this morning. Um, now, granted, I used a power hammer for most of it, but that's just because I have a power hammer. Uh, I still finished them all up with a handheld hammer. Now, it won't take long at all to get that burr pulled up. So, we did what's called setting the bevel on the 1K side, right? This side doesn't feel like it's quite there on this end. Yeah, but you've got it up in here? Yep. Okay. <coughs> so, what we did on the 1K side, 1,000 grit side, is pretty much... Uh, the shaping that you would do like if you're sharpening a knife all right you're just getting your angle roughed in making sure that both sides meet that you've got that burr that's going back and forth to let you know now what we're doing it's there and it's very very fine we're going to call that a 6k burr so the burr is also going to be approximately the same size as the stone, the grit of the stone that you're using. So, uh, 6,000 grit burr is going to be a sixth of the size of a 1,000 grit burr, if that makes any sense. So they're getting quite a, that burr is getting finer and finer and finer. Now, I know you guys that are thinking ahead, you're going to be like, well, okay, you're making this burr. Well, you can't shave with a burr. No, you can't. Now, when we're sharpening a knife, we use the burr to let us know when we're at what stage of the sharpening process, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing the same thing with a razor, but with a razor, you don't use micro bevels that you create on the stone. You use micro bevels that you create on the strop. And we'll get into that here pretty quick. But you can see how that water is getting cut. Yeah. Do that some more. See how that water is acting like a, or the blade's acting like a dam there? If she was to do like, like a rolling X stroke, a forward one, you would see that water get cut right off the surface of the stone. Like that? Yeah. And you can tell that there's hardly any water remaining behind the edge. That it's flat cutting that water right off the stone. Okay, now you felt the burr on the second side? Okay, now let's go to the stone strapping. Now do 10, 15, actually I'm gonna get, my wife says I don't show t enough angles here, so we're gonna do that, all right? See how the spine and the edge are both contacting at the same time. The strokes are nice and smooth and controlled and very light. And this is her first time. 
I mean, I bet you if this girl hones 30 or 40 more razors, I mean, she'll be like, she'll be teaching everybody else how to do it. Now that time that didn't was kind of right. that yeah, kind of skipping a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, do two or three more. And then... Okay. So now, what we're gonna do is called palm stropping. Now, palm stropping is pretty much what you did on the back of your hand, only you use the palm of your hand. Okay. okay? Uh, first, make sure it's dry. Well, I guess the first one, it's going to have the water that's on the blade. Um, Master Olivi, uh, another straight razor maker in, um, I can't remember where he's at, Italy, I think. Um, He's the first one that I saw doing this. Now I've been palm stropping knives for a long time because it works really good to clean the edge um, on a pocket knife or if you're right at the end of your job and you just need a little bit more edge to be able to finish your job up, you can palm strop it and get just a little bit more edge, finish out your work and then get back to the stones if you need to. Mm -hmm. But with straight razors it works really good because um, for some reason, that, I mean, I've stropped on my forearm also, and it works about the same too. But, um, but palm stropping is a really good way. Okay, so you start, put the heel of the razor on the heel of your hand. Okay, <laughs> now do not go into your skin and do not go across your skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you do that, you'll cut. Yep. Oh, you just did it just fine. So heel to toe, heel to toe. And then see all that nastiness yeah. on your palm? Yeah, get rid of that. Okay. Now. Now just be careful that you don't hit your wedding ring. Because you'll ding your edge. It shouldn't hurt your shouldn't hurt your ring at all, but you'll ding your edge. My now, ring's already all dinged up. Yeah, mine too. The uh, razor though is looking good. I uh resized mine the other day. Nice. Yeah, well it, it was starting to get that grown in look. Yeah, so you just palm strop, you know, 10, 15, 20 times, something like that. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna, gonna start pulling that burr off. Okay, now this burr, remember, this is a 6,000 grit burr. So it's very, very light. I mean, it's just barely hanging on there. So palm stropping, you can clean the palm of your hand way easier than you can clean your strop. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you know, you just wash the thing off, right? Um, so that's why I like palm stropping before you go to your strop. All right, so that one should be nice and clean. Now, <coughs> we're gonna go over strops right quick. Let me get my nail here. This is gonna be a long, no, that was too. Actually, you know what? We're gonna go ahead, we're at 53 minutes. Um, I'm gonna cut you off. We're gonna swap out the batteries and um, and then we're gonna go over strops. Uh, I'll end up stitching the whole video together so it, you, cool. know, you guys won't see that there's a, a gap, but we will. Um, so I'm gonna swap the batteries out and then we'll get onto strops and then I'll finally get to shave. I haven't shaved since Monday, I think it was, That's when we said. talked earlier. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited to get all this nasty and shot because it's getting itchy, you know? And, ugh. All right, so we will be back in just a bit. So we're back. Um, we didn't touch the yeah, razor at all. Um, I knocked set it over it, just now. <laughs> yeah. We set it down, um, had a quick coffee break, um, swapped the batteries in the camera. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but since I found the little thing on the, the screen, it doesn't turn off anymore. So you don't have to see me tap the screen to see what you're seeing, but it does run the battery down quicker. But I got two spare batteries too so we're good to go all right so um let's see we taped up taped up the razor um she pulled up her first burr on the 1k side went to the other side moved the burr to the original side um then went to the 6k side 
refined the, the scratch pattern and the edge, brought that burr down to a 6,000 grit burr instead of a 1,000 grit burr, and it is very, very fine. Then she did uh, 10 or 15 stone stropping strokes. Um, yeah, we'll just call them stone stropping. And then we left off with uh, palm stropping, maybe, what, 15 strokes on each side on your palm? Somewhere Something like that? that. Yep. Got to uh, uh, see the, you know, the, the trash, the stone particles and steel particles in the palm of her hand. Well, we didn't uh, zoom in on that, but uh, just imagine what it was. <laughs> so now what we got to do, I mean, we are very, very close to a finished edge. Now what we got to do is strop it, and then I will shave with it and test it. First of all, you'll notice that we haven't tested sharpness. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of guys will take... Um, you know, hair, and uh, well, guys like me that've got really short hair, you know, we'll borrow, borrow some from our wife. You know, grab an old hairbrush and you know pull the hairs out of there, and then you can actually test your edge with the, you know, you just hold the edge straight up, mm -hmm. and then just take a hair <coughs> and then put it on that edge, and that that uh, the hair that's on this side ought to just fall without making a sound, right? The problem that I have with testing edges like that is that a dry beard hair I've heard has got about the same toughness as a copper wire of the same thickness. Really? Right. I was always kind of wondering about that. I mean, if you've ever shaved dry, you know, I mean, I'm... Uh, Bad idea. Yep. Not, <laughs> not so good, right? Okay. Even with a brand spanking new like a cartridge razor, shaving dry is just not a very pleasant experience at all. Mm -hmm. But a well-prepared uh, beard hair that's wet and has lather on it has got about the same toughness as a wet spaghetti noodle. Oh. And it, you know what? I've heard that, and I've always kind of thought that it was about right. Well, the other day, yesterday, I was testing this stone out with this particular razor, brought it up to an edge, and I knew we were going to be <coughs> shooting this video today, so I didn't shave with it. But I thought, you know, I wonder how that's going to feel. So just dry, I went ahead and I took some hair off of the underside of my neck. And it pulled, I mean, it was, I mean, it mm -hmm. took the hair, but it wasn't very comfortable at all. I went up underneath that, underneath the microscope, and boy, you'd have thought that I drug that edge through hell and back. Really? I mean, it was nasty. I mean, it, there was little chips and rolls. I mean, it looked like I had been cutting cardboard or newspaper with the edge. <laughs> which your straight razor edge should never contact anything but a wet prepared hair mm -hmm. okay so if you do feel like you must test you know like the ed the hair on your arm wet the hair on your arm first then test to see if it if it shaves because if you're you know doing that that hair test I'm going to have to look underneath the scope one of these days and see but I think head hair will also ding up your edge so you're breaking the edge down while you're testing to see if it's ready to go. Right. Which doesn't really make much sense at all to me. Um, anyhow, that'll be a video for another day. So what we got to do here is we got to do some stropping. Now I'm going to pick you up. Okay, so strops. I have got a couple of strops out here. This is the one that we're going to use. This is my shop strop. <laughs> And it's got the towel over it because this is, you know, a working shop. So there's plenty of dust out here. And so you want to, um, you know, put something over your strop so that you don't get dust on it. This is an eBay special, Middlesex Barber Supply. It's a two and a half inch wide strop. I ended up getting this with a box of uh, other shaving stuff with uh, a couple of uh, vintage straights off of eBay. You know, nothing special. Horse hide, two and a half inches wide. Uh, 20 inches long or so this now the leather on this one's still in good shape so this is the one that we're going to use the linen side is not in very good shape a friend of mine he makes this was just some fabric at his local fabric supply house he took uh, what looks like a metal coat hanger or eighth inch piece of brass rod and made a d-ring stitched it on there bam that's the linen side so your linen side is going to clean the edge. That's also the side that you'll strop with after your shave, okay. um, just to clean the edge off real good. Okay, And then the leather side is the side that you finish on. This stuff in between, 
the green stuff is called chromium oxide. It's about a 30,000 grit abrasive. Okay, so we've got the 1,000 grit, the 6,000 grit, and then we can go straight to that 30,000 grit on the, the chromium oxide if we want to, but I don't think we're going to need it. Um, just some other strop choices. This is my um, really nice English bridle strop. Oh, and of course I pulled it off. Okay. And you all have seen this one in other videos. This is a straight razor design strop. Very nice. You can replace the, uh, the fabric. You can replace the leather. And it's got the chromium oxide in between also. I would tell you that you could go to straight razor designs and pick one of these up. They were about 70 bucks a piece. But straight razor designs, uh, they have just closed. So I'll have to find another place to recommend you. This is just a homemade strop. This is um, two inch wide. Uh, Latigo, I believe, from Tandy Leather. Um, that is a gate belt. Do you know what a gate belt is? For a horse? No, for nope. people. Okay, mm -hmm. gate belts are, uh, they're a, a two inch wide cotton strap and they use them a lot in nursing, especially like um, um, nursing homes. Okay. Oh, like lifting? Yeah, like lifting. Okay. So um, if, you're, if you're taking a person that's in a wheelchair or something and you need to move them, um, you'll put one of those gate belts on them first, and that way you've got a good solid uh, part to grab a hold of, you know, when you try to, to move them from one place to another. Okay, so I'm going to set you right here where you can see, can you, let's see, if I hold this out there okay so I'm gonna take this razor and I'm gonna show you real quick I mean you took to palm stropping really well and that's the same thing what this is jeans also work good to strop on too when you're stropping okay you hold the strop tight or taut but not tight okay, okay so like right there it's really tight right I mean I can kind of feel this part right here stressing a little bit through the end mm -hmm. okay so I want to pull it to that point and then just kind of back it off some you do want to have a little bit of give in the middle okay. but not like this okay. this will round your edge off this rounds your edge off too much whereas this nice and flat will just strop it up and clean it okay, okay. so um, I typically do um, and this is perfectly enough speed See how I'm rolling on the spine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, the same amount of pressure on this strop is what you use on the stone. Okay. Okay. So not very, I mean, we're talking in ounces, not definitely not in pounds. And you can see how that strop is uh, going down just a little bit. How the strop goes down as I pass over it. Yep. So... Um, we're not going to go Crocs on this one. We're just going to go straight linen and leather. So probably 10, 15 on that. Mm -hmm. Then you swap to the leather side. Okay. And it's the same thing. Nice and controlled. Turn on the spine. Place the edge. Don't let the edge slap. Just place the edge on the leather and then bring it back. The same thing that you're doing with stone dropping. Got it? Sure. All right. Except for first, we got to take the tape off. Okay. Now palm strap it one more time to get rid of any dust or any um, anything else that might have gotten on the blade. Okay. We are going to go. <coughs> The linen side first. Okay. Now stand to the side. There you go. Yeah. Yep, roll on the spine. Okay, a little bit less pressure. There you go. Gotta get that look of under concentration in there too. 
and you don't have to go fast i mean i know you've seen it on like you know old westerns or something or seen it in a mm -hmm. youtube video where some guy he's just sitting there wailing away at it the faster you go the less control you have and this is all about control <laughs> we're gonna get some nice close-ups in here Okay, you're coming down a little bit too much, so either increase your tension okay. or lighten your touch. Probably increase the tension because I think you've got a pretty light touch. Okay, now your strop tension is very important. If you do, um, I mean from day to day, Okay, so if you like stropping on a nice tight strop like this, which I recommend you do, do not do a tight strop one day and then a loose strop the next day. The day that you do the loose strop, you will round your edge over, and then, um, then when you strop on a tight strop, it won't really do much. Okay, now switch to the leather. Now these little leather ones are nice because they've got a nice handle. Now hold hold both handles at the same time because if you don't, then this one will sit down here and it'll want to swing back and forth. Uh, yep. Okay. So yep, stand to the side there. So y'all have seen that view. Now we're gonna come up here, straight up and down. Yep, just very very light. And then just make care to make sure you don't contact these. Make sure you don't cut your strop because that will damage your strop and ruin your edge all at the same time. And we're going to go this angle. Now we're going to go right over her shoulder, which should be pretty much bird's eye view of it. This is stuff that I can't show you guys because, well, I do have a, a hat that I've got a, a mount on. Make a seasick. Yeah, probably would. Yeah, rolling on the spine and then nice and easy coming back. Okay, that should be about enough. Okay. Let's come on over here. And we're going to do the test shave thing again. All right. Now remember, this is the first time that this edge has ever seen a hair. We have not put it to any dry hairs. Um, we haven't tested the edge. And there's honestly no reason why it shouldn't shape. Because we brought the burr up on one side, brought the burr up on the other side so we know that our bevels are meeting. Mm -hmm. We polished and refined those bevels on the 6K side so that now we've got a nice smooth edge. <coughs> we palm strop the blade to get rid of the majority of the burrs. Mm -hmm. And then we stropped on linen and leather to finish it off and finish micro beveling it. Um, there should be no reason why it won't shave. We are gonna go some Taylor of Old Bond sandalwood shaving soap. This is one of my favorites. It smells pretty good, I think. It does. Does it? it smells clean. Yeah, kind of a kind of an old school type smell. It's not like uh, like the other day I shaved with uh, Parasso Green. Now we've got really hard water here, so I use quite a bit. Um, that Parasso Green is a it's their menthol. It's a really good soap too, um, and it's got the. the menthol in it so your beard will tingle or your face will tingle, tingle for a little bit. Actually I probably should bring you down here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Just throw that in there, whip up a lather right quick. And a little bit more water. Maybe a hair more. 
you want it to where it looks kind of like the stuff that you get out of a can, you know, like the Gillette foamy stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, nice and creamy looking with very little air bubbles in it. Oh, and this is one of my favorite brushes here. Made it to match one of my razors, Cocobolo, uh, with a Badger two band um, brush, or uh, the knot from Maggards. And then a friend of mine actually made, made me up a dozen or so of these little coins right here in her print shop. Uh, got my name on them, they look kind of cool, I think. Oh. So now is where we get the funny faces. So don't laugh too much at my funny faces. I mean, laugh some, but don't, don't laugh too much. Okay. You ready to see how good you did? Yep. You think you did all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah? All right. Again, this is the shaving where I get to see what you guys are seeing and see in the mirror. You know, it feels really good. I mean, you can see the hair that's coming out there. I tell you, I am really glad that I don't have to shave this way every day. I mean, <laughs> shaving with a straight is cool and everything. I mean, I do shave. When I do shave every day, I shave with a straight. Usually I shave about every other day or every third day if I'm really busy. But what I'm talking about is shaving around the camera. Yeah, where you can't yeah. see yourself. Because, I mean, I can kind of see, but I kind of can't. Then I usually like to palm strop in between passes. I usually do two passes. Um, yeah, usually two. Every very once in a while I'll do three passes, or if I'm in a real big hurry, I'll just do one. But you know, not bad for a first pass. You also find that once you get used to you know, your your normal razors. When you shave with a different one, I mean, yeah, you're shaving and everything, but you have to concentrate a little bit more. It seems like your hand learns a razor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first pass, I usually go top to bottom. Yeah, I'm still in there. Top to <laughs> bottom. And then I usually come... Uh, uh, against the grain up on the neck underneath the neck and then on the cheeks I typically I don't go against the grain on my cheeks I go um, cross grain mm -hmm. my cheeks um, uh, it's not really irritation it's when I go against the grain on my cheeks it's like uh, it's like it gets too close and like a couple hours later it's like I can feel the hair starting to poke out of the skin mm -hmm. again it's really kind of strange. I mean, I've tried it, I don't know, probably a couple dozen times anymore. I just don't really mess with it. Mm. 
Is it hard with people staring at you while you shave? I know, right? I'm trying. <laughs> trying not to think about people make uh, laughing at my funny faces and everything. You wait till we get to my left cheek. Up until I uh, did that last video with Vance, um, the only two people that ever seen me shave with a straight was uh, my wife and my boy, because you know I taught him how to shave with a straight. Oh, eight months ago or so, something like that. It's the only two people that ever seen me shave. So you know, and them, I mean, they laugh at me all the time. So it wasn't like they were, you know, somebody new laughing at me, right? I laugh at you all the time. You laugh at me all the time? <laughs> well, I do too, but, you know, ah, oh, well. If this will help somebody else get into shaving with a straight, then it's all worth it, right? Right. Okay, so uh, my right cheek, you know, I mean, I shave with both hands. This cheek, I don't really have a problem keeping the skin fairly tight, just the way it is. My left cheek, you'll probably laugh at that, though. <laughs> so let's move that off so I can see where I'm at. Yeah, I think you did a fine job on this. This cheek is where it's at. I got a hollow right here, like almost like, almost a dimple. Um, and so I have to puff my cheek out to get to it. And everybody always gives me grief over it. Right in here. So you see that little bit of soap that's inside the pits on my face? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Mm hmm. <laughs> I know, pretty funny, huh? <laughs> you know, it's also kind of funny. Sometimes you see other guys shaving on YouTube. Well, I can't imagine where you'd see other guys shaving except for on YouTube. I mean... A barber shop. Well, you yeah. know. That's the only place I can think of. Yeah. Um, of course, they wouldn't be shaving themselves. True, true. But you see the guys on YouTube, that they, they puff their cheeks out like this, and they take a deep, deep breath when they do it, and they go... I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, they're holding their breath while they're puffing their cheeks out. Well, you know, you don't have to hold your breath. I mean, you can breathe through your nose and puff your cheek out at the same mm -hmm. time. I mean, you know, that way you don't, like, lose oxygen and start, you know, like, passing out on your bathroom floor or anything. <laughs> you know, that's kind of a normal one of my shapes. I mean, I've got spots right up in here where the hair grows really kind of funny. And I can't feel it when I run my finger this way, and I can't feel it when I run my finger this way. But if I come this way, I feel just a hint of it. So I don't feel it here, I don't feel it here, but I can kind of feel just oh, okay. a hint. Can you see anything there? Not, like, barely. Like barely? Okay. I mean, um, I'm not normally trying to impress anybody with my shaving skills anyway, but... Okay, so, that, uh, let me rinse this off. All right, and I don't see any nicks, um, any weepers, anything like that. I mean, it's honestly for shaving, looking around the camera, this is about as good a shave as the, the one the other day. Um, so I think Ashley did an amazing job on the edge. A little bit of care for the razor afterwards. After you're done shaving, palm strop it a couple of times, and that will get rid of... Um, uh, 
any soap that's inside the edge, hairs, anything like that. You can also feel, if you palm stop real careful, you can feel if there's any spots on that edge that maybe there is a little bit of a burr left, or if it rolled, or if there's any chips, anything like that. A lot of times you can feel those in a palm stop. There's none on this. I mean, this is just a good clean edge. So um, I'm going to have Ashley do 10 strops on the linen. Now the 10 strops on the linen is after the shave is very important because that is going to dry your edge out. If you don't dry that edge out, um, you'll start getting corrosion and it'll be corrosion right on the edge which is where you really don't want it. sound. No, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, don't do that again. Uh, that might be <clears throat> a good time to talk about your strop. After the razor, I mean, if you just want to get into this just as cheap as you possibly can, go get a gold dollar for 10 bucks shipped from China and get one of those King, I think it's, uh, it's the older King. Um, King has got a new one out that apparently is for uh, harder steels. Um, but that's the older one and boy it sure feels like a good stone I'll have to do a review on it here in a little bit um, either get a cheap strop or make a cheap strop um, to start off with because if you look at this handmade one this is my boys and you can tell he's nicked his strop a couple of times so when you're first starting off you know get a cheap strop and um, you know just kind of get comfortable with it once you decide this is a hobby that you're going to stay with you know then get the best drop that you can afford i mean that one from straight razor designs i think um like i said you can't get him anymore because he's out of business but there's other guys that make similar to it i want to say i dropped like a hundred bucks on that strop something like that um, it's got the English bridle leather, which is um, it's a nice leather. The standard ones with like Latigo, I think are typically 70 bucks somewhere around there. We're going to do one more step today. And what we're going to do with that is, since I actually honed this razor up and she's helping us out with a video, she's going to take it home with her. But... Don't share razors, okay? Because remember, I mean, you're taking that razor and you're... If you were to look at that razor up underneath magnification, you'd see bits of skin, hair, blood. I mean, just all kind of nastiness, right? Okay, so what we're going to do with it first is we are going to put it in some barbicide. Uh, I need a clamp. I'm going to keep the edge away from the glass. And we are going to clamp it up here. Ah, come on. Well, tell you what, I'll do this part off camera. So it's going to need about a 10 minute soak in barbicide, and that'll kill. I mean, I don't think I've got anything, you know, communicable Joe or. Yeah, Joe Cooties. I don't think I've got anything like that's going to kill anybody, but. But we'll disinfect it just in case. When I go to uh, all of my razors, when I finish them, I test shave with them three times, mm -hmm. then disinfect them before I ship them out. Because that way you know you're getting you know, a proven edge. I know you're going to get a good edge right off the bat because I've tested it. But then you, know, you disinfect it before you ship it out. Um, so yeah, so that's Ashley's very first time ever holding a straight razor, much mm -hmm. less honing it. And you saw I shaved with the thing, so she did a fine job. So this is really not as tough is what you might think was it was it hard mm -mm. no you didn't cut yourself i didn't cut my face no. off no you made it there was no blood no blood yeah <laughs> no blood it's a good day <laughs> all right anyways this is going to be a long video it's probably going to be an hour and 15 minutes i hope you enjoy it if not fast forward through the parts that you don't like either way um again this is joe calton with calton cutlery you can find me on the web caltoncutlery.com my friend ashley from the volkswagen club 
uh, Holmes are first razor start to finish and then I shaved with it uh, to prove that it works. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.